I've been in banking for about 20 years now. Normally would start about five o'clock in the morning. And most of the time get the flour off the boat, but because sometimes the boat is inconsistent, we have to you know, get it on from Eraro, which is very expensive. I think on an average, we get a boat every maybe two months, three months. It's a bit hard to plan how much flour to get because our problem here is the storage. I remember that we did go without bread for about a month. It's a pick fencing project. The fence, the wire, and the post, and the tie wire. We ordered from Rautong by boat. Although we purchased it from the supplier, but still, to reach in Mangai depends on the boat. If the boat uh, won't come here two, two months, so nothing else we can do but to wait. There's 17 people with a disability on Mangaya. This is what we do. We paint um, pareu, we call it pareu, um, sewing, cushions, pillowcases. Most of our centre resources came by boat. The massage table, oven, fridge, chairs, box of uh, nappies and box of clothes. Sometimes the boat, you know, wait until two months. So it's hard for us. It's hard for us to wait for those stuff to, to come in. Mangai is different because it doesn't have uh, natural harbors or lagoons like Rarotonga. The energy of waves that come here are much stronger. The geology, especially the, the reef, is quite steep. On uh, rough conditions, when the boats do come in, there is that risk that the waves could take them on either side of the seawall. I can remember one fella when he went out and he was hit by the wave and the canoe right off. When the boat arrived here, the sea is very rough. The gago would, wouldn't come ashore. Shops don't have supplies, families can't get the basic needs, sugar, milk, diapers for the children, and it really does cause a lot of problems and stress on the family. Sometimes we run out of fuel in, on the island, so we can't bring in these people, so we have to, to stop. A lot of times we run out of diesel, and of course, with no diesel, we can't bake. And if it will wait outside the reef for about three, four days, and the sea is still, still rough, nothing they can do, they have to turn back. They had to delay the boats coming over because uh, the harbour was full of rocks and um, they had to bring some heavy machinery to clear the big rocks so that they can get the barge in, you know, to, to get the boats to work. No rice, no milk, no the basic foods that you need in the household. There was just a you know, shortage of that. Coastal Calculator aims to translate general climate information to something specific that a coastal engineer can use. So it's developed in a spreadsheet, it has a whole database of wave and water level information. You take some information on your local situation, so in the case of Manaya, the, the width of the reef, the kind of the height of the reef, the kind of the shape of the coastline, and you can make 
predictions of the extreme wave and water levels at the shoreline and look at the impact that climate change has on that information over one, two, three, four generations into the, into the future under different climate change scenarios and what that means for engineering design conditions at the coast. That can then be translated into things like, you know, the elevation of the, of, of the wharf, things like the thickness of the concrete, some of the structural aspects of that. Just behind me, it's creating a wall uh, along the beach just to stop the cross current of uh, wave activity coming along the beach face. So widening up the channel to 30 meters and deepening it to four so it can cater for bigger ships. We want to relocate the ramp. That way both the fishermen and the people using the barge can safely launch and um, bring their boats back on land. The new slipway is positioned in the sheltered area. That's the southern side of the basin. It's easy for especially fishing boats to launch. The sheltered area is more calm. This is called a spending zone. This came about from uh, using our coastal calculator. The energy of the waves is quite strong along this channel. So at least we have that area for it to be uh, broken up, leaving the rest to be more sheltered and protected. The lessons learned that's coming out of the harbour would help us bring some vital information that will feed into developing something like coastal management policy for my island. Now that's a good example that we can use in other islands. The idea is move away from business as usual development, but moving more towards climate resilient development. And so that in the event of incoming frequent tropical cyclones, we're able to withstand that we're able to still have a harbor. And so we need to look at how we can improve the strength and durability of infrastructures. We need to capture that and share that with the rest of the world and how we did it in Mangaia because that may be applicable to other island communities in the Pacific as well as the world. is working to help communities adapt to climate change with pilot sites in 14 Pacific Island nations. Supported by the United Nations Development Programme with funding from the Global Environment Facilities Special Climate Change Fund and additional funding from the Government of Australia. PAC is executed by the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Programme and supported by the United Nations Institute for Training and Research Climate Change Capacity Development Programme exploring adaptation methods in three key areas. PAC is building resilience to climate change.